Today we're just going to have a quick talk about configuring Predbat. So the first thing you need to do once it's installed is actually edit the configuration YAML. You see I've already opened this in config app daemon apps predbat config apps.yaml. This file holds all the static configuration. If you make a change to it, <clears throat> it will reload automatically. You don't need to restart app daemon or um, home assistant. Um, so at the top, the, these things, the module and class are just fixed. Um, the prefix, um, I would recommend changing unless you're trying to run multiple instances, that gives the prefix to all the entity names that Prebback creates in Home Assistant. Um, time zone is obviously your time zone and it works separately from the app daemon one to actually uh, understand the, the time zone of, of your system and the inverter. Here, the first thing you'll notice is this G serial has got a regular expression, so it tries to auto match your serial number. So you're going to find it says to look for names with sensor give TCP underscore some text and then underscore SOC kilowatt hours and extract that bit of text and use the serial number. And you can see I've set a second one for serial two, so if you had two inverters, it would match the give TCP2 name and find the serial number of that one. So assuming that all works, which it does for most people, then the sensors load today, import today and export today will automatically be set to the serial number that it's found. If it didn't work, you could set this manually to your serial number or even indeed set each of these sensors individually. You notice here there is a list of them. So if you wanted to add two load sensors together, you just make a second entry like this and you'd have a second load sensor. I don't actually have any need for that. Um, so that then gives it the historical data for what's happened so far. This is in the past. And if you remember the previous video, I was saying to check your historical data also and make sure you've got it. G Cloud, you wouldn't normally need to use, but as instead of these sensors, if you enable G Cloud, it could download it from your cloud account. For most people, there's no point in going offline when you've got it locally. But maybe if you just set up the system and you it with GIS TCP, you could use the cloud for maybe a week or two and then switch back by turning that back off again afterwards. And again, the cloud needs your serial number, but it also needs your cloud key that you have to copy from your account and put into here. Next is the number of inverters you've got. So I've only got one inverter, but if you had two or three, you'd have to set that there. Uh, and then the next section, you've got a choice. You can either use rest mode which I'd actually recommend for most people if you've got it supported, in which case you just have one rest port per inverter. There's two already set up here, but they, they just go up in incrementing numbers and, and you're kind of done with the inverter control. If you don't want rest and you comment this out, then all of these apply. And again, they're auto configured based on the serial number. Um, and so these are the different entities in Home Assistant that allow you to control the inverter. But the rest kind of bypasses that and goes directly to give DCP. Then we have an important setting called inverter limit. Here you need to set the maximum AC rate of your inverter. So this isn't the same as the battery discharge speed. So if you've got, say, a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, then you set that here, let's say 3600, which is probably what mine should have been set to. If you've got a separate solar inverter on top of your um, battery manager, then you can add the two together to make the total figure. And again, it's one per inverter. Um, and it's important if you want to do discharge, because if this figure is too low, then you won't have enough spare um, to discharge and deal with solar at the same time. So try and get that number right. If you're not sure, then just set it to something a bit higher, like uh, maybe the default 7,500. Inverter clocks use a rather advanced feature where you can, uh, if your inverter time's wrong, you can tweak the time it sets the start and end slots. I, I kind of ignore that for now and come back to it later. PV forecast today <clears throat> is meant to match the soul cast sensors. I've put a regular expression in here now that matches with or without soul cast underscore on it. So it's sensor forecast today or sensor soul cast forecast today. If these don't match up, you'll need to set them manually to where your sole cast sensor names, uh, and that's important also. Car charging energy is essentially a way to make your historical data more accurate by finding a sensor that tells you when you were charging your car. 
and then it can subtract that from the historical data because obviously car charging is quite large loads and you would you wouldn't necessarily do it every night anyway so you kind of want the base load to not include that here yeah, i've got a regular expression that matches zappy and matches wallbox sensor names but you if it doesn't match yours you might need to set it here manually to the same name as you find in home assistant car charging planned is essentially if you want um Predbat to plan your car charging so it can anticipate when you might charge so this sensor essentially says the car's plugged in and because different car sensors have different states these are a list of possible states that mean the car's plugged in and will actually charge tonight so you can add something or from here if you've got a different response from your sensor again it's got the defaults of zappy or wallbox here but you can change it to another sensor car charging limit is actually the um the charge limit that's set on your car and here i've got it linked to my tesla and charge charging soc is the current car charging percentage if you don't have these it will still work it just to assume the limit's 100 percent and the car starts at zero when it's plugged in and the car charging battery size you can also set the number of kilowatt hours these things you don't need to set if you've got octopus intelligent so if the octopus intelligence slot matches the octopus intelligent plugin here then none of these will apply and it'll use intelligent to do the same thing for you which is quite nice then the um, your energy rates are the next thing so these are really important so you can use the octopus plugin if you've got octopus tariff to set your import and export tariff and again they auto match the meter numbers for you but if it doesn't work you'll have to paste the name of the the, the rate sensors in manually or if you don't have intelligent just comment these out and you can set the rates yourself so you can set different time bands and different rates for both import and export this example is just one fixed export rate but you can have different time bands for that as well um, the metric ones are just a fallback if you haven't even set that and it will just use the fixed number depending on whether it's charging or not uh, i wouldn't recommend using that anymore um, days previous actually sets how many days in the past to take data from uh, from your historical load so i've got a mindset to 7 and 14 so it'll average seven days ago and 14 days ago obviously to get to 14 you have to have 14 days worth of data and the default in home assistant is 10 days so you might want to not start with that unless you've increased your default and collected enough data forecast hours and forecast plan hours are essentially how long to predict forward so forecast hours is 48 hours and plan hours is 24 hours after the next charging slot and this kind of makes the blackout period where it's pre predicting but not trying to control anyway i wouldn't change those initially max windows is the maximum number of charging or discharging slots you have in the plan so it's set to a maximum of one to eight here um, obviously it doesn't want to be an infinite number in case something goes wrong it'll make your system very slow um, run every is means that how often red bats run i recommend leaving that at five minutes but if you're finding it quite slow on your system you could go to 10 minutes um, then battery scaling is essentially to work around issues if your battery is saying you've got an 80 percent depth of discharge but it reports its size as bigger than it really is you can use battery sailing say 0.8 would be for an 80 percent depth of discharge and it'll actually make your battery look a bit smaller um, import export scaling is essentially just scale your previous import and export data and again that's just used for a workaround some systems are reporting the wrong units for those and then the final thing this config file is export triggers and it's probably something to play around with later but this essentially is going to tell you when you're going to export a large amount of data say if i want one kilowatt hour of um of energy and i want it to last over an hour then this trigger will be set when that export is is going to happen and then you can use it to trigger something like start your washing machine for example Okay, I think that's it for the config file. Um, I'll come back in the next video to talk about things you can actually configure in Home Assistant itself. Thanks then, bye.